What's going on, ghosties? We are Tales of Spooky Coffee House. Welcome back to our podcast. If you're new here, thanks for joining us. We are your hosts. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Veronica, your favorite. <laughs> okay, somebody's getting a little conceited over here. Ew, uh, let's have a vote. Put it to a vote. <laughs> okay, listen. We're we're going to skip the vote and we're going to talk about some stuff. <gasps> okay. Okay. <laughs> so, ghosties, Veronica and I thought it would be super fun. Last episode, she asked me a couple questions, and I thought it would be fun for us to do some BuzzFeed quizzes this episode, because who doesn't like BuzzFeed quizzes? Dude, period. I exactly. love BuzzFeed quizzes. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like I'm my 16 self, again, doing the Cosmopolitan uh, or like oh the, my the 17 or whatever 17 it's magazines, yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, will you okay. end up with Jesse McCartney or Zac Efron? Oh my god, Jesse McCartney all the way. I love Jesse McCartney. I used to have the... He was my first uh, celebrity yeah. crush. He was not my first celebrity crush, but he was definitely one of my celebrity crushes. <laughs> I feel like... You're right, because my first celebrity crush was Skeet Ulrich, so there was seriously something wrong with me from a young age. No, I think you just understood from a young age. That's, yeah, that's probably true. That he was okay. worth looking at, you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, Ghosties, the first quiz we took was answer some questions to see which horror movie villain matches your personality. What do you think I got? I feel like you got, I don't know, maybe like Michael Myers? Interesting. What did you get? <laughs> I got Jason uh, Voorhees. Oh, that was my fucking second guess. No lie. Like, I was going to say either it was going to be Michael Myers, Jason, or Freddy. Yeah, I got Friday the 13th, and I'm, I kind of like it. It's Yeah, okay. So, you want to hear something funny? Yes. In a surprising turn of events, I got... Pennywise. What? <laughs> ghosties. But you hate Pennywise. You hate you hate clowns. Yeah, <laughs> ghosties. If you're new here, I hate clowns, like it's a lot. Like you know I what, had Chelsea? a bad experience. <laughs> Chels, I know you hate clowns so much that as your best friend, my topic this episode is on a cl- killer clown. Yeah, I know. I I hate you. God, I love that for you. Yeah. If, Ghosties, if you have a topic that involves clowns, like, Veronica's guaranteed to have either already covered it. I will it, do it. Or will, yeah, or will cover it. She's got an if unhealthy you give me a really good one. Me. If you guys have a really, really good one on a, on, on a clown or, or dolls, I'll even pay you for it. Like, just give me a good, good one to talk about. Ghosties, this is how much she hates me. <laughs> I'm willing to pay money to see her suffer. God, evil. All right, so the next quiz. (laughs) We know if you'd survive a horror film based on your answers to these questions. Veronica, what'd you get? All right, guys. I'm sorry to say that I survived. Yay, we survived together. <laughs> what is your say? Mine says you barely made it out uh, alive. But you did but it. You did yep. it. Shh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got this. Yep. One. Sure, you'll have some serious trauma to work through for years to come from watching everyone around you die, but you're breathing. That's what counts. I've... How <laughs> accurate is that to my real life? I know, right? <laughs> Holy shit. I love that we would both survive a horror movie together. Fuck yeah, dude. Okay, okay. Last one, ghosties. Ready? Which fictional black cat matches your personality? (laughs) I, okay, listen. I don't, I, I never really watched any of the shows or movies that my character was in. So I, I'm going to go based off of your reaction to what I got to see if it's a good or bad comparison. Okay, who'd you get? I got Sylvester from Looney Tunes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it says you're persist persistent confident and you never give up you're very enthusiastic and love to laugh oh ain't that the truth okay listen the reason i'm laughing so hard okay 
is <laughs> besides that when i was younger my nickname in my family was tweety and my cousin mm-hmm. was sylvester because i used to piss him off so much that he would chase me and so now i'm just picturing me pissing you off and you chasing me <laughs> interesting like that was like literally you know what we can make that a reality i do kind of want to chase you around the house with the butcher knife in my hand oh that escalated so quickly while nana panics in the background and your mom's just clapping cheering us on dude i could picture that so accurately run faster sweetie she's right behind you (laughs) and your mom speaking mad spanish like what the hell is going on no, she's gonna be like, I got her, I got her, like get her, get her. <laughs> I'm trying, mom. So, uh, I got Salem from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, that's it a says, good one. Yeah, it says I'm witty, ambitious, mischievous, and want to take over the world. Despite my sarcastic attitude, I care deeply about my yes. friends. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that does go well with you. Oh my god, I totally <laughs> forgot about him. He was like. He used to trip me out when I was a kid. Because I would watch that sh- I actually watched that show. It's a show I watched. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, wow. I love how, I love how even for, like, the 90s, like, he had, they did a really good job. Very at, realistic. Animation. Very realistic. Yeah, very, very. I shouldn't say animation because they use, like, a mechanical cat. But, like, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what they did to yeah. Yoda in his huge <laughs> reel. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Totally yeah. did Grogu. Like, but. For it being back in the day, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, as much as I don't <laughs> want to, do you want to get us started on the true crime topic of the week? Absolutely. Can you just hear my enthusiasm? Yes, loud and clear, and I got you. I got mm-hmm. you. So, <laughs> Ghosties, like I said before, I am going to be talking about the killer clown. By the name of John Wayne Gacy. Very popular guy. Very popular guy. If you haven't heard of him, you could Google him. Many things will come out. If you're in LA, you could go to the Museum of Death. And you can see some of his stuff in there. You can go to the Haunted Museum in Vegas, where they have some stuff there too. This guy was weird. Okay? Weird. I mean, he dressed as a clown, so... So that doesn't make him weird. The the clown part yeah, is not what makes him weird. Fl- that's a red <laughs> flag. That's a red flag. So, a red flag you're on a me. date. So what do you do for a living? Uh, I dress up as a clown and go to kids' Ooh, birthday parties. Sorry, I suddenly have something I have to do. Bye. <laughs> oh my god, silly me! I forgot my wallet, and I'm not gonna let you pay for it. I'll be right back. <laughs> Run. <laughs> um. So, John Wayne Gacy was born at Edgewater Hospital in Chicago, Illinois, on March 17th, 1942. That was a good debate. Is it Illinois or Illinois? Illinois, Illinois. right? Illinois. It's yeah. Illinois. There's no debate. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you know what? Let me just take another hit really quick, because you're <laughs> grumpy. Listen, I'm ready for bed, okay? It's past Cheers. my bedtime. Cheers, ghosties. <laughs> I don't care. You signed up for this. Anyways. <laughs> and it's not past my bedtime? Gosh. So, he was a serial killer and sex offender who raped, tortured, and murdered at least 33 young men and boys in Norwood Park Township near Chicago, Illinois. So, like mentioned before, he did dress up as a clown and did public performances. Therefore, that's how he got his nickname, the Killer Clown. Chelsea, you doing okay? Hmm. I am, like, low-key. Do you remember when we were recording a video? I don't remember what it was for. And my power was out. (gasps) Yes! Okay, and in the middle of it, like, it went back on and I screamed because I was, like, picturing something behind me and then okay so like right now as you're talking about this fucking killer clown i'm imagining my power going off and like something like happening and so like my anxiety keeps rising the longer you talk bro (laughs) and now at this point i'm just like psyching myself out and i'm trying to like stop because like i'm i'm an idiot go ahead keep going what if there's like a killer clown (laughs) shut the fuck up shut like they're watching oh, you right now. Sh- like I'm going. I'm gonna kill you. You stop that. Stop that. 
Stop just that. Just picturing. No. Oh, you know what it reminded me of? <laughs> when uh, Stephanie's stepdad scared you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Tell that story again. <laughs> okay ghosties off topic <laughs> when when I, what were, were we in middle school no we were in high i wasn't school. there so yeah I no know. i was i was visiting california we were in high school and it was stephanie taylor and i taylor we've had on the episode on the show before stephanie we're gonna have on the show eventually who like, is she's that one of she's who one of she? our best friends ghosties and so, we've just all like our schedules do not collide she's a married woman now i know she's I said an adult collide. i meant a line anyways so taylor and i were at stephanie's house and we were doing bvb makeup which ghosties is black veil brides it's <laughs> it's an emo band it's an emo band okay and so we're doing our makeup and we're just having a great time like we're having a sleepover we're just chilling and then her mom comes in to take pictures for us and like cool like we could use the help and i still have these pictures like they're like i love them to death they're so cringe but they're just like fond like fond memories and so her mom calls us in like it's like half an hour later or something and she's like there's something weird in these photos and (laughs) she zooms in and there's a cloud in the window and when i tell you that all three of us literally as like we're standing right next to her mom we just scream bloody murder and like start hugging each other and then we like (laughs) go back into her room and it's still there so then we scream again and it was just it was ridiculous and her stepdad had put a printout of a clown in the window and it was fucking horrifying at the time because all of us are scared of clowns <laughs> that is hilarious so, yeah so shout out to uh jenny because <laughs> she was fucked up for that but i love her for it <laughs> see that just makes you want to do it to someone you know what i mean or like redo it to you as an adult don't, please don't please don't because i will probably cry <laughs> that's fine i'm willing to see you make you cry once okay can we can we get back on topic here you're the one that went off topic <laughs> honestly i could stay off topic i love it i love it here it's so funny like just picturing <laughs> it all happen like it's just hilarious to me like i really wish i was there i know like re re imagining it as an adult i'm just like we're so stupid and she was like she was such a g for that but <laughs> but also like remembering it from like a kid point of view that was terrifying yeah i think the fact that like i know jenny as well like it's just knowing how she is and like probably her reaction just makes it even funnier she did she giggled like a little schoolgirl the yeah, whole time yeah. she was just like <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> so back to uh john wayne gacy i hear the ice cream truck outside shut up just hurry up and finish your segment because I... I am like I'm done with clowns. It's, it's... I'm not talking about clowns. I'm talking about an ice cream truck passing by my street for reals. Uh, anyways, he would lure his victims to his house, um, where he committed most of his murders in his ranch house. He would then hold them t- captive, rape and torture them before killing them by asphyxiation. 26 victims were buried in the crawl space of Gacy's home, and three were buried in a different area of the property, and four victims were discarded in... the Oh, I got this. In the Des Plaines River. That wasn't that bad. Um, <laughs> you done? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm gonna punch you in the face. Imagine, ill. What if I was psycho like that? Um, you kind of are. Anyways, Gacy would get away. <laughs> <laughs> The silence spoke values. I, I got it from my brother, okay? I got it from my mama. Um, Gacy would get away with his uh, murders for six years, okay? Two of his victims who... Okay, so he had victims that he would torture but then let go, like an idiot, right? But the thing mm-hmm. is, is that, like, for example, two of his victims who were let go after being tortured by Gacy would go to the police, but the police did nothing. Like, literally nothing. And then some parents, obviously, they would report their sons missing. But again, the police would do nothing and just rule it out as a runaway case. Mm. Isn't that so sad? Like, 
what could have been solved a long time ago like he even got like in prison for like uh i think it was just 18 months or something like that for molesting a boy and he was let go and it's just like had they listen we've talked about that before we're mm-hmm. like there were so many warning signs to these things that if mm-hmm. they had just been stopped before could have prevented more tragedy so unfortunately as much as it sucks i i can imagine it like it takes me back to mary vincent for sure you know Ooh, yeah mm-hmm. so i'm just gonna throw some fun f- they're not fun but you know what i mean ghosties yeah some fun facts out there there's a lot to be said about this guy and a lot to be shown and seen like i said he you can find some of his stuff in some museums and i highly recommend you do so because this guy was not only a clown but he also was an artiste and would paint portraits of himself or just portraits of clowns and uh, they for sure have those paintings at the museum of death in hollywood if you're ever in town but yeah just because of the time crunch i'm just going to give you guys some fun facts before i end my segment so john wayne gacy would work and manage a kfc (laughs) one of many that his father had bought i guess that's not really a big fact but it kind of goes into this next part so because gacy was involved with politics he would have dinners for the local police department investigators would come over and this one investigator in particular was interviewing one of john's employees where the employee stated that some employees were asked by gacy to help dig trenches in the crawl space beneath the home of gacy which then triggered that investigator who had had a dinner at gacy's residence and remember smelling a foul odor coming from the vents which then kicked in his brain that those were the odors of decomposing bodies so Another fact is Gacy used to work as a cleaner in a mortuary where he would often spend nights and work alone around dead bodies. And to finish, Gacy was in, in convicted and sentenced to death by lethal injection, but his crimes will forever be talked about and viewed in museums. So there's so much left to be said about this guy. But I mean, just with the information alone that I gave, it's pretty like Oscar. Yeah. Yeah. One of the like biggest things about talking about more well-known not just serial killers but like more well-known cases in general just topics is that yeah yeah, because there is so much information sometimes it's easier to just like condense it let you guys know that the case is out there because we if we were to sit down and like actually talk about some of these cases in detail for detail we would be here for hours yeah yes it's so hard too sometimes like doing research and like you want to literally out, yeah. talk about all of it but it's like mm-hmm. you you can't it's a like, lot yeah so we just yeah. uh find what we find more interesting or what we think you guys would find more interesting and mm-hmm. kind of just highlight it you know highlight it and talk about it yeah and and John Wayne Gacy is one of those like harder cases to talk about because it's just so out there. Yeah, so popular. He was mm-hmm. he was well known even before they knew him as a murderer. Yeah, I know there's a documentary on Netflix if you guys want to watch it. There's de- there's like plenty there's of documentaries so many on documentaries. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I would recommend the visual documentaries rather than audio or even reading articles because i want you guys to like see pictures of stuff (laughs) not just just not so much like the crime scenes but like just like everything in general because they show pictures of like him and his life and just everything Mm -hmm. like i remember seeing his paintings in the museum like like i really Mm -hmm. i stand there I, i stare at it and i tell myself like a killer painted it painted this like a killer dressed as a clown you know like that kind of stuff is so surreal too Mm -hmm. because it's like it's one thing to talk about oh like this this person created this art and then it's another to like be in front of it and be like oh that person was a killer like all of he did all of these bad things and he created this and it's still like here they also display letters at the mm. Museum of Death, written by the serial killers, the killer clown being one of them, John Wayne Gacy. 
So mm-hmm. I don't know. I just highly recommend that museum. It's such a good one. And I've actually talked about the museum in season one, if you guys want to check out that episode. Very cool backstory to what is now the Haunted Museum or the, the Museum of Death in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. But anyways, that being said, do you want to get us started on the paranormal topic of the week? Yeah, so ghosties, we're going to talk about the Paris catacombs and the unexplained activity underneath it. I don't like it. I don't like I don't like the idea of getting lost in a maze. First Dude, of all, no. Let me just say ghosties, if you've never heard of the Paris catacombs and you're going to hear about it for the first time, I'm so excited for you. (laughs) Also, like, how have you not heard about the Paris Catacombs before, ghosties? Like, damn, not Chelsea calling you out. Yeah, because, like, this is, like, I don't know. I've heard about the Paris Catacombs when I was, like, super little, and they just terrified me. Honestly, I don't think I learned about them until I was older, so. And you know what's, I don't know, it's just really strange. Because, like, I didn't know about Pearl Harbor until, like, eighth grade. Yeah, same. See? So, See? It's yeah. possible. I, I don't know. Yeah, it is. It's possible. So, the Paris catacombs are considered one of the most haunted places in the world, and it's actually under one of the most popular cities in the world as well. So, under the bright lights of Paris, France, lie the Paris catacombs, which is home to more than six million people's bones. Picture it. Try. Yeah. Try to picture, Just picture it. it. Ghosties, these catacombs, they're mazes, like Veronica said. They're miles of tunnels underground. Walls, ceilings, the Walls, floor ceilings, filled floor, with skeletons. All of it is bones, yes. So, a kind of like brief history of the catacombs. In the late 1700s, cemeteries became overcrowded. And believe it or not, like, I don't, I can picture it, but I really can't. Like, it's crazy. It was common for people to be walking around with dead bodies in carts and bones lying on public ground. Okay, Paris. Yeah. there. You know, Paris is just weird. There were even (laughs) reports... (laughs) There there were even reports that a restaurant's basement was filled with human remains. This paired with the... So, like, this paired with the popularity of mining at the time and the grounds collapsing from the weakened underground tunnels... It became a solution for both of these problems. So they literally filled the walls and floors and ceilings of these underground mining sites with stacked human remains to prevent the, basically to prevent the city from caving in. So they substituted cement with dead bodies or Um, dirt. They didn't have, they didn't have cement in the 1700s. But, Chelsea, you get what I'm saying, man. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but, like, they didn't have cement, okay? They, oh, my th- God. And guy. and they had so many dead bodies lying around that, like, they had nowhere to put them. So Leave them there. It's decor. In the, public, in the roads? Why not? <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure, like, that's one of the reasons why the Black Plague was spread so quickly. Just, just putting that out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I talked about the Black Plague, remember? And I didn't know anything about it. And you were like, we learned about it in history class. And I was like, well, I didn't pay attention in history class. So I don't know why I did that. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'm so fucking dying. Yeah, didn't you find out about the Black Plague? When As we I was like, learning about the 20s? Black Plague? Yeah. No, like it was two, like... three years ago? It was season one, I believe, because I was talking yeah. about some island so like off two, of, three like, years ago. Italy or some shit like that <laughs> and I talked about its history and I was like for people that don't know about the pl- the black plague like me um it's about and then Chelsea's just like you don't know about the black plague <laughs> we literally learned about it in middle school <laughs> okay. I literally had I had nightmares about getting the black plague like how do you not like anyways moving on it's okay it's okay um so with the remains of six million people underground, it's no surprise that the catacombs would be considered haunted centuries later. Mm-hmm. In 1810, in an effort to make this, the area safe to visit, the catacombs were temporarily closed and redesigned. So they literally took the bones and just moved them around. Like Is that is that like, why there's pictures of like very well stacked skulls and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because they rearranged them to make it safer. Interesting. 
Mm-hmm. Let's make these dead bodies look nice. <laughs> Since 1955, a big part of the catacombs has been closed to the public for quote-unquote safety reasons. They they have a designated tourist section now, and it is prohibited by law to go outside of these sections. But of course, we have those lawbreakers. Those that like to break this law and explore the tunnels are called cataphiles. Cataphiles? Cataphiles. Cataphiles. Yeah. So kind of like files and catacombs like put together. It basically <laughs> no, means you're like, not explaining it that basically to me. means like people. Yeah, it's basically like people that are extremists that like to explore the catacombs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyways, we'll get more into that later. So the first cataphile that they believe existed was called the doorkeeper. He was a doorkeeper of a military hospital and is widely considered the first cataphile because, according to the story, he one day ended up in the quarries by following a stairway found in the courtyard and lost his way in the catacombs. Eleven years later, his body was found, identified by the keychain that he carried on his belt. He is one of the most famous of the Paris catacomb deaths because he was basically kind of like the first mm-hmm. almost not everyone believes the story but it does serve as a, like a cautionary tale for those who want to wander in the catacombs i've seen youtube videos of people who hired pretty much like sketchy people to give them a tour of the catacombs and they got ditched mm-hmm. and they only yeah. had like their video to look back on to see which way they came from to get out mm-hmm so this man's name was Philibert Esperiet. I'm saying that wrong. I know I'm saying it wrong. I'm not going to deny it. <laughs> he is buried in the catacombs now in the exact place where he died with a tombstone describing his death. It is believed by cataphiles and catacomb folklorists that every November 3rd, his ghost haunts the labyrinth of the catacombs. So next we're going to go back. Do you remember that restaurant that I mentioned which one the restaurant with the dead bodies in it oh yeah yeah okay so mary mary many paris catacomb legends uh may or may not be true but the story of cat skulls is the weirdest one not the kitties yeah so it was found in a book about underground paris which revealed in 1896 that they discovered hundreds of cat skulls (gasps) in the tunnels the catacomb shared a wall with a nearby restaurant which was stop wait i think i know where this is going (laughs) where they believe that a previous manager had been passing off felines as rabbits oh my gosh yes so this being an unacceptable practice because obviously they didn't like to eat cats disposing of that many cat bodies would be kind of difficult so it was convenient to just dispose of them in the catacombs wow one of the next popular stories about the the catacombs is one of the creepiest as well so in the early 1990s a group of cataphiles was walking through the catacombs when they found a video camera on the ground the camera still had footage on it and as they watched they heard disturbing noises They could tell that the man in the video who was holding the camera was lost. He had no idea how to escape. And that the longer the video went on, the more mad the man went. The video ended abruptly with the man dropping his camera to the ground. And to this day, no one knows who he was, if he ever got out, or if he's even alive. If you guys want to watch that video, it is online. Mm -hmm. It's quite popular. Yes, many also believe that this vi- that this camera footage was what inspired the movie As Above So Below. And listen, I told you that I was terrified of the Paris catacombs since I was like really little. When this movie came out, it not only like secured my fear of the of the catacombs, but the movie was fucking terrifying. I'm have you ever seen it? it? I guess I'm a- no, I'm going to have to add that yeah, to my Yeah, you need to. Like it is such a good movie and it literally just was like fucking terrifying next we're going to talk about the voices of the catacombs lovely so many people believe that this legend came from the video camera that they just that i just talked about one of the famous legends is that after midnight 
if you're in one of the burial sites in the catacombs, you can, you'll can start hearing voices. Like, the walls will begin to speak. And it's basically said that disembodied voices will try to persuade you to venture into the catacombs, like, deeper and deeper until you're unable to find your way out again. I'm good. I won't listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my my last famous story from the catacombs is in 2004 a group of police officers went exploring into the restricted parts of the catacombs to kind of like check things out they uncovered some very strange things so first they found a pa system which was playing pre-recorded guard dog barking which was kind of strange to like read they found 3,000 square feet of galleries like wired for phones using pirated electricity and they found a bar a living area, a workshop, a lounge, and a cinema room, which was able to seat 20 people. The cinema seats had been carved into the stone of the catacombs, and they also found cameras on the ceilings that were recording the officers. Ew. Yeah, so a few days later, okay, just a few days later, the police brought back up a whole squad. They went into the area with a with a whole team to investigate all of this however when they got back to the area that all of this was discovered everything from the phone lines to the cinema had vanished the only thing that remained was a note that read i'm not even going to try and say this in french so i'm just going to say it in english but the note (laughs) base the note basically said don't search Ooh, what do you think they would have found if they if they searched they probably would have died (laughs) <laughs> that's true i mean if so, they could like, set all that stuff all that stuff up like imagine like traps and, and stuff and the fact that they like they completely took out the cinema which was carved into it that's fucking like that's weird that's strange yeah. like that's that's near damn near impossible so yeah there's there's other theories too like there's a whole belief that there's a civilization of people that are not normal that live in the catacombs Mm. that's that's one of them like uh i believe they're also considered to be cannibals too i think that's one of the legends Mm -hmm. but yeah there's just there's also a gateway that used that they used to consider to be the gateway to hell in the past it was like a gateway i think it was like to a cemetery or something but they considered it the gateway to hell which is another aspect that was inspired by as above so below that was included in there as well Mm -hmm. but it is the pairs like every resident like native in paris will just they'll tell tourists straight up do not venture outside of the public access like you you not only will you get lost you'll possibly like die from from getting lost this goes hundreds of meters below sea level so like the pressure in there is crazy it's just like everything it's just not worth it yeah if you don't starve to death you'll go mad you know yeah it's not worth it yeah plus there's there's people that reside in the catacombs like there's literally people that live in there Mm -hmm. and uh Like, that's their home, and they're very protective of it, yeah. And there's so many, how do you say it, satanic rituals that happen there? Like, you Mm -hmm. will, Mm -hmm. you never know if you're going to run into the wrong people, you know? Yeah, and make sure, too, ghosties, that you use trusted tour guides for this, too. Like, don't find some sketchy people online. Use vetted sources, because like i think veronica has just said it earlier like they'll take you outside of the restricted areas and then just leave yeah. you so it's it's definitely not uh not worth it and there's no cell phone service down there so like obviously if you get lost you're you're really fucked so oh also i read this article which kind of like is what prompted me to do this segment where they used to have a rave down there interesting I wonder if I've heard about yeah, that. Like they, that kind of sounds familiar. Yeah, like there was like you you would get a map and you had to like follow the map in these like super like like you had to like crawl to get to it and it was just like a fucking rave in the Paris catacombs. I was like, what? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I was like, I'm so Anything good. Like, no, like, thank you. Cave? Nah. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like. Caves. I'll like. I don't I'll like do a bit of my the claustrophobia cave if it's not could anything never. I need to like crawl through and shit. Mm-hmm. But, nah, <laughs> no, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, like, I read this one story about this, uh, 
this cave adventurer who like literally they showed the video of like him squeezing his way into there and he had to like suck in his tummy and everything but he couldn't get back out and he died in there because he couldn't get out yeah i've seen that one i was like yeah yeah no thank you anyways we're gonna move on from that because that's like making me claustrophobic now just thinking about it let's go back to thinking about clowns yeah no let's not do that either um i do need a coffee break but i don't want to talk about clowns or claustrophobia stuff or yeah let's so you don't i got a perfect idea what what i don't feel what you don't want to hear what i have to say trust me yeah i I probably (laughs) really don't uh so perfect idea let's talk about the tarot card of the week yes (laughs) i feel like this will save me from having a mental breakdown before bedtime i'll give you one later don't worry (laughs) i hate you (laughs) so the tarot card of the week i'm not sure what you pulled but i pulled the three of wands and we've kind of had like a a theme going this month yeah a positive where, one i think but what yeah a very positive one where we've been talking about goal setting and breaking down these goals and seeing the progress of them the three of wands represents like planning ahead and foresight and so we've created the momentum that we need in order to keep going and achieve our goals And this card really kind of talks about like the expansion of that growth. So how to maximize our potential to get the very most from the opportunities that we are receiving. So this can mean broadening our horizons or um, pushing through. But I, I really feel like because of this theme that we've had of like goal setting, that it's telling us to really push through and and because you know it takes 21 days to create a habit and if we want to reach our goals we have to push through to keep going and I feel like this card is a reminder that hey we're already in the third week of January we've come this far keep pushing yourself you're gonna achieve what you want as long as you don't give up so kind of adding to what she had to say there's a book that I read back in college I think it was like before like the third time I dropped out there's a book (laughs) I read called the power of habit that I had to read for a class and it is very interesting and I feel like very motivational for those who are trying to make any kind of change or accept any kind of change in their lives so the power of habit it's a nice bright yellow book (laughs) I highly highly (laughs) highly recommend it we'll make sure to to post that somewhere so that way you ghosties can see yes. it yes post it. it'll we'll post show it somewhere. up somewhere in your feed ghosties so the ace of cups and it reads spread the love you are being offered a taste of refreshing opportunities full of emotional expression and fulfillment the water in the ace of cups is allowing you to flow with love and creativity in your relationship with yourself and others free flowing you allow yourself to pour your feelings in a way that is cleansing and nourishing for your soul a desire for compassion and connection is inspiring you to lend a helping hand to those in need By sharing your gift with the world, you become much more open about who you are and the unique talents that you bring. Creative juices are ripe and glowing with new possibilities, the beginning of deep love, compassion, and happiness. Your energy is contagious. Don't forget to pass the cup and share a good vibe. (laughs) Or maybe, you know, pass the joint. Um, The more you give, (laughs) the more you receive on multiple levels well if this ain't motivational enough for you ghosties i don't know what is i know right the cards have been very clear for these last couple times that we are doing what we need to and we just need to push through and keep going like we're on the right track we just have to not give up don't give up stay real with yourself and your decisions you know your goals Mm mm-hmm don't overwhelm yourself yeah and like i talked about in the last episode too the planets and stars are shifting right now and it's supposed to be like really great for four specific signs but just for everybody but like those four specifically 
So, like, this is our time. Like, everything is gonna start falling into place, not just for those four signs specifically, but for everybody. Like, it's gonna be great. I'm excited. Me too. I, I, I accept I need this. all good vibes. Mm hmm. All the vibes. Welcome them with open all arms. Of them. Well, all right, ghosties, thank you so much for joining us this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode as much as we did. If so, please make sure to give us a follow on Instagram and TikTok. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for extra content. We are your hosts. I'm Chelsea. And I'm Veronica. Have a spooky weekend, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye! Bye. <laughs> what the fuck?